Greetings, I'm the one called Horror Show, and welcome to VG Therapy, the channel where I talk about games. The game I've got for you today is a Guardian Legend for the NES, a game that is a mix of a lot of things and has box art for each region, while this one, you might argue, is not the best one, it's definitely not the worst one. And now, a little bit of history. The Guardian Legend was made by Compile, a game company whose notable titles include the Puyo Puyo series, Kirby's Avalanche slash Kirby's Ghost Trap, and Shadowrun for the Mega CD, along with a few more titles I'm unfamiliar with. However, the publisher is one that I'm much more familiar with, namely IRAM, who also published R-Type, Red Alert, Deadly Tales, Holy Diver, Metal Storm, and a number of other titles. The Guardian Legend came out on the 5th of February 1988 in Japan, April 1989 in USA, and sometime in 1990 in Europe. I don't know why it took them so long to bring over, because it could have been translation, but there's not a great amount of text for them to translate. There, like, there is a lot of text in the game, but a lot of it is reused. So they could have just translated once and then just used that elsewhere. So I have no idea why it, there was such a big gap between initial release and it releasing over here. Could have been that they just didn't want to initially, but then they changed their minds. Like that sounds like a more plausible reason, but I don't know. The game came out either way to everywhere with mixed reviews, praising graphics, sound and tech controls. However, they said it had repetitive gameplay, which is something I will either confirm or point out to be wrong. We'll see. Also, a complicated password system. Now, instead of having an uppercase and lowercase, they instead have uppercase and letters with those symbols, those two dots, which are called diaresis, or however else you're supposed to pronounce it. And I found out that, yeah, that's not that hard. It's a lot easier because you're not getting confused over over certain letters that look the same, depending on the case, and so, yeah, I have no idea what those people were talking about. But either way, I did more research into the game, and I found out that it's actually a sequel. The first game is known as Guardiac, and it came out on the MSX. I decided to watch a 20 minute long play on it to see what the connections are, and it seems that outside of the Guardian legend in Japan being called Guardiac Gaiden, there isn't any. Like, the end of the game states that Great, you destroyed all the enemy mother's ship, then your mission is completed. Later you find the writing that tells you the position of the Relief Fortress from the Broken Base. You developed the new Guardiac to destroy the Relief Fortress in the universe. To be continued. Which some people have kind of gone, Oh yeah, that's referring to where you go in the Guardian Legend, but it's kind of thin. But, either way, enough about that. What's the Guardian Legend about? I don't hear you asking. Well... A long time ago, a race of aliens decided to send an entire world called Naju onto a collision course with Earth, and in the time it took for it to be taken notice of, the life forms on the ship decided to turn evil, and your role as the Guardian is to go through and set up the self-destruct sequence, and that's about it. The game doesn't get too involved with its story because it decides to rely on the game itself. The gameplay is fun, it's got tight controls, tight controls for what you may ask, well for the shmup sequences where you fly around as a jet, before or after transforming into a female robot. Transformers, man. They confuse the heck out of ya. The shmup sequences are fun and are tight. I felt that some of the levels were pretty hard, but that's a good thing. You can use all the same weapons as when walking around, which let me tell you, while walking around in your gynoid form, you can still shoot at the same pace, which is pretty goddamn fun. You get a plethora of weapons on top of that, and they each have their own uses. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the weapons, because there's about 15 of them, so... Yeah, I'm not gonna waste your time with that. And also, I generally never use them outside of bosses. Because, sure, there's me not liking to use uh, weapons with resources when there's a free option, because that's just how I play, but also because your regular gun is good enough. Like, it does enough damage and shoots fast enough, and if it's not, then just run, because most creatures take like a second or two to spawn, in which case you can just run past them. And running past enemies is viable because the map is pretty big. There's a reason the game often gets compared to Zelda and Metroid. The map is sprawling, and as you progress, you unlock keys that open up the map even further. And while walking around, exploring is pretty fun. One thing I don't like is that a Zelda map and a Metroid map gives you some details on the room. This game gives you nothing, and I'm often left going the complete wrong direction because I was trying to find a way away on a wall. But for the most part, getting lost was a good thing because lying around the map are upgrades. Some of these can increase your ammo count for all your weapons because they share the same ammo. There's also upgrades for your weapons and your health. All of these you'll need because I can't tell you how how many times I died. There are bosses and mini bosses. The mini bosses are the only tough enemies that you fight as your gynoid form and the bosses are at the end of the shmup levels. They all drop items and some bosses drop keys that open up the level. It was kind of interesting because I'd often have multiple areas open at the same time and as I finished one I was just about to move on to the next. I'd get a key that opened up more of the map and that was always kind of surprising. Yeah, the game's fun. 
like I had a lot of fun playing it, the music and listening to the music. And the gameplay is great and the controls are good. And I didn't really find the game to be that repetitive. Like sure you do the same kind of things fairly often over and over again. But I didn't really care. I mean, I was having fun. Wasn't that noticeable of a to be a detriment? So I don't know what those people were talking about. And yeah, I mean, so the game, in my honest opinion, gets a four, a high recommendation. Because, yeah, it does have its bad parts, but they're so minor, it doesn't really matter. Like, sure, it's not perfect, but I still have to highly recommend it to anyone who can play NES games. And with that, I've been Horror Show, and this has been VG Therapy.